All right, so let's talk about sleep patterns and sleep theories here. Um, okay, so first off, our circadian rhythm is basically our body's natural uh, clock. It will um, kind of let us know when we should be sleeping, when we should be awake. Uh, works on that 24-hour cycle just like our day uh, and even has some temperature changes along the day. Uh, you know, when you study body temperature, you see that your body temperature falls during the nighttime uh, when you should be in bed. And a lot of times that's why when you go to bed, uh, maybe you feel hot and you're kind of kicking off the covers and um, don't feel like you need the covers, you're kind of burning up. And then once you get to sleep, you kind of find yourself in the middle of the night, maybe 1, 2 a.m., pulling those covers back on you because you are cold. That's because of those temperature changes. Um, and then your body temperature rises once again as you reach those uh, morning hours, uh, like 7, 8, 9 a.m., uh, because your body knows it should be getting up and being awake at that point in time. Uh, and then our body temperature even drops a little bit in the early afternoon, and a lot of times that's why we uh, maybe feel a little tired once the school day is over. Uh, and if we kind of get home and aren't doing anything, we kind of uh, start to get a little sleepy, maybe take a little uh, midday siesta, which that's another great example of these body temperature changes. Some cultures even have those siestas because of those body temperature changing, uh, you know, midday or uh, early afternoon. So uh, circadian rhythm does change with age. As you get older, maybe you've noticed that your parents or maybe even grandparents uh, kind of seem to maybe be on a little different body clock than uh, teenagers, uh, and that's the reason why. Circadian rhythm does change as you get older. Um, all right, taking a look at sleep. One of the things we use to study sleep is an EEG. Uh, we talked about this uh, back in Unit 3. This is uh, measuring the brain waves, uh, you know, just by putting some sensors around our skull area and uh, seeing how the brain is functioning. Uh, well, we found out a few things through these EEGs. Uh, number one is that, uh, you know, as we fall asleep, our brain waves uh, do change. And as we go through different stages of sleep, which we'll talk about a little bit later here, um, those uh, waves are kind of indicative of what stage of sleep we're in. Um, one big thing that you guys will definitely want to know with some uh, quiz questions, homework questions, test questions coming up is the typical sleep cycle is 90 minutes. That's a big thing to remember. Uh, we operate on 90 minute sleep cycles. Now those sleep cycles kind of change a little bit about you know kind of how they're made up throughout our sleep uh, during a night, but, but they stay about 90 minutes in duration. So that's not gonna change. Um, and then the two main stages of sleep that we're gonna talk about, we are gonna break down non-REM into different stages, but you know, the two very different types of sleep that you have is REM sleep, uh, and REM obviously stands for rapid eye movement, most of you probably know that, and then non-REM, which is non-rapid eye movement sleep. And later on, we're going to break those down into different uh, stages, you know, stage one, stage two, etc. So looking at sleep activity, once again, we're taking a look at not only those brain waves uh, through our EEG, but also eye movements. Uh, you know, rapid eye movement is exactly what it says. Uh, when we're in REM sleep, uh, we see our eyes kind of darting around underneath our eyelids, even though they're shut. Uh, we can see our eyes kind of darting around. Um, muscle tension, you know, muscles tense up and then become relaxed at different points of our sleep. And then EEG patterns. And these are the big ones that you guys will have to know. You got to know the difference between these, uh, these waves that we're going to see throughout our sleep cycles. Um, beta waves, alpha waves, and delta waves being the big ones. And uh, we'll kind of match those up to the different stages as we go along here. So uh, measuring sleep activity, here's just a picture of uh, somebody who is uh, hooked up to an EEG machine, uh, measuring not only those eye movements, but also uh, muscle tension in the jaw, and then brain waves, uh, which is that true EEG uh, measurement. Okay, so let's kind of break down some of these, all right? Uh, your waking beta waves. Uh, so beta waves go with an awake but relaxed state. Okay, so you're awake, maybe you're kind of um, starting to get to sleep, uh, but you're not quite asleep yet. Uh, we call those beta waves. And as you look on this little chart here, you see that they're uh, small waves. They're not very long at all. Uh, don't have a very high uh, amplitude. Uh, which, you know, which we talked about you know, measuring waves back when we were talking about the eye and the ear. Um, then uh, your alpha waves, uh, which are um, you know, a little, uh, little more sporadic, and you kind of see the change between waking beta and waking alpha. And then your REM sleep. Um, and then the REM sleep is you know, almost uh, the same as like your waking waves, 
you know, it looks like the brain is almost in an awake state. So that kind of shows you how active your, your brain is in that REM stage. Uh, notice once again, in the, the second one there, the teal colored ones, the waking alpha waves. Um, you know, once again, those are the waves that are um, kind of just as you're falling asleep. Um, you know, so you kind of see the waves become a little bit deeper, a little bit higher amplitude, a little bit more, you know, I guess you would say uh, sporadic, but uh, those are right before you would fall asleep. Okay, and then let's say we fall asleep, okay? And when you're looking at these brain waves, you can actually point to the exact time when somebody falls asleep. You can see it with their brain waves. And when this non-REM stage one sleep happens, um, you know, you start to see these uh, waves in non-REM one, non-REM two, and non-REM three. And as you look down through those three stages, you notice you know, the one big thing is they get a little bit more uh, deeper, you know, big, long, extending waves. Uh, and those delta waves are the ones we really want to pay attention to. The delta waves are the ones that correspond with really deep sleep, like stage three deep sleep, where you are really um, you know, out of it. You know, somebody calling your name, out to you might wake you up in stage one or stage two, uh, but probably would not wake you up in stage three. Maybe even somebody tapping on your shoulder when you're asleep would probably wake you up in you know non-REM one or non-REM two, but maybe not non-REM three. That's a really deep sleep pattern. Uh, so those are some of the things you see with those brain waves. Uh, okay, so you know going back and just kind of reviewing these waves, uh, waking beta waves are the ones that are just kind of like normal brain functioning. Waking alpha waves are when we're awake, but we're very relaxed and almost kind of falling asleep. Um, and you start, you know, you see the difference there between the beta and alpha waves. Uh, and then the stage three delta waves, we want to know those as well. Uh, very deep waves associated with deep stage three sleep. Um, now let's talk about some of the things that go with these parts of sleep, okay? Um, Let's start with non-REM sleep, stage one, stage two, stage three here. Uh, kind of some um, you know, big indicating factors here at each stage. First off, for non-REM one, we're going to have these hallucinations. Okay, so the hallucinations that you're having uh, might be something very simple like, you know, you feel like you're walking down a sidewalk, something very realistic. We're not talking dreams here. We're talking just, you know, little daydreams maybe. Um, you're walking down a sidewalk and you trip. And if you're in stage one, sometimes you can have these little, you know, uh, jerking sensations where you kind of like, um, you, know, you guys, you guys probably all have these before. Um, you're starting to fall asleep. It's the very beginning. <clears throat> some of you may kind of jerk and, uh, have some, uh, you know, body movements as you're falling asleep. And maybe your parents have seen this and uh, maybe some of your friends have seen this, but you know, we've even kind of woken up before because of some of these hypnagogic sensations, these sensations that we have where maybe we're walking down a street and we feel like we trip and we actually react to the trip and wake ourselves up. Uh, happens in class sometimes, you know. I've seen this with students. You guys have seen it with your classmates. You know, somebody gets a little tired and they start dozing off. Sometimes they jerk up, you know, like all at once, and their head almost like maybe hits the table or something like that. That's a hypnagogic sensation. That's exactly what we're talking about. Uh, Non-REM two, we see these sleep spindles. That's kind of the big indicator of non-REM two. Uh, these little bursts of activity. Um, and at first we thought maybe these were dreams happening. But uh, we, we don't have anything to back that up, and we don't really even think that's true anymore. Um, they're just these bursts of activity that happen during non-REM 2 uh, sleep. So sleep spindles go with stage 2 sleep. And then finally, the delta waves, the really long waves of deep sleep. That is associated with you know, the third stage of non-REM, which is a really deep sleep. Um, and with their non-REM 3 deep sleep, that's also when some people sleep talk or sleep walk. So if you've ever had this before, if you've ever had you know, sleep talking episodes or sleep walking episodes, uh, that is when you are in non-REM 3. Um, so um, once you get to non-REM 3, you know, we're kind of talking about our first you know, 90 minutes of sleep here. We go down from you know, having that waking alpha waves and we fall asleep. We're in non-REM 1. Uh, we stay there for maybe you know, 30 minutes or so. Uh, then we go down to non-REM 2, non-REM 3, and then we go to REM. Now, REM is your rapid eye movement sleep, uh, and your EEG patterns look almost like you're awake. There's so much brain activity going on that it almost looks like you're awake from a brainwave perspective. Um, and we call REM sleep paradoxical sleep because the paradox is that our brain is really, really active. Like I said, when we're measuring the brainwaves, they look almost like we're awake and thinking about things, but our body is paralyzed. 
And the way that our body is paralyzed is, um, you know, everything in the brainstem kind of shuts down any outgoing uh, messages to the rest of our body. And we, we literally are paralyzed. If you guys have ever had sleep paralysis before, really scary, um, you kind of are awake and conscious and you realize that you are sleeping, but you can't move your body. Uh, it's kind of a very eerie feeling. Uh, but if you've ever had that before, that's because your your brain is still shutting down those signals that are outgoing and you cannot move your body. That's uh, sleep paralysis. That happens uh, when, the, when the brain is coming out of REM sleep. Uh, and then finally, REM rebound. Uh, if we stay up for a long period of time, you know, say studying for a test or pulling an all-nighter, and uh, we go to sleep after an extended period of being awake, say being awake for 20, 24 hours, maybe even 30 hours, something crazy like that, our brain is going to go to REM quicker. And here's the reason. Like REM is our most valuable part of sleep. REM is when our body is kind of um, in recuperation mode. It's repairing itself. Uh, the brain is kind of storing things from the previous day. Um, REM is really the magical time of sleep where all the good things are happening, all the benefits that we get from sleep really are occurring in REM sleep. Uh, so, so here's kind of the, the all put together, okay? All put together, and we'll kind of contrast and compare here with adults and, and older adults. Um, but, but just look at this young adult's uh, typical night's sleep, right? Let's say we get eight hours. I know most of us don't, but let's say we get eight hours, okay? Now look at the first uh, couple hours, right? That first sleep cycle we have, you know, kind of measured out there to 90 minutes, right? Um, you know, let me get the cursor here. So, you know, 90 minutes, you know, be right in here somewhere uh, between an hour and two hours. So we're talking, the first thing that happens is we're awake and we're relaxed and finally we go to sleep, okay? Now we're not in REM yet. Notice how we don't even stop at REM. We go right into stage one. We spend a short amount of time in stage one and then we go into stage two and then we go into stage three and look how much time we spend in stage three for that first uh, sleep cycle, right? A long time compared to the other ones. And then we jump up to REM. Now we have REM way up here because it's a lot more like awake brainwave patterns than it is down here. You know, a lot of people think REM is like, oh, way down here, your big deep sleep. No, that's not correct. Uh, it's actually much more like an awake state, so that's why we have it up here. And then notice one thing as we go throughout the night's sleep. Once we get into our fifth, sixth, seventh, eight hours of sleep, notice how deep sleep decreases, right? The amount of time that we spend in deep sleep, like non-REM 2 and non-REM 3, decreases, and the amount of REM we get increases. That's why we say getting six, seven, eight hours of sleep is so important because we need those REM periods, right? The REM periods get longer as we sleep longer, and those are very valuable to us. So, you know, notice how there really isn't even any non-REM three here uh, in you know, hours five and six, right? Let's contrast that with an adult, okay? Adult sleep cycles are much more sporadic, and uh, we are jumping from non-REM three up to non-REM two very quickly, you know, hardly spend any uh, time at all in deep sleep. And then just look how much, you know, they're much more choppy, you know? Uh, we wake up more. You can kind of see these these awake periods where maybe a young adult only wakes up a couple times during the night, right? Look down here at older adults, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, a dozen times a night, right? Um, but we are still getting increasing periods of REM as we sleep longer um, and less time in uh, the deeper sleep, non-REM 2, non-REM 3. You know, non-REM 3 is basically non-existent after the first hour or so in older adults, so... Um, don't worry about this super chiasmatic nucleus. We'll talk about that next time. Uh, but hopefully that gives you some, um, you know, information about the waves, uh, different uh, sleep cycles, and different uh, stages of sleep uh, through non-REM and REM.